Well, we have finally had a break in the rain, so I wanted to take this opportunity to show off to you one of my absolute favorite wood camp cook stoves. It is the Firebox Nano. Now, as you saw in the title, I do reference a get-home bag or a bug-out bag, and that this stove, in my opinion, is perfect for that. That's not just clickbait, guys. I'm serious. This is, in my opinion, probably the best wood cook stove that I've come across for a get-home bag or a bug-out bag. So hang around, and I'll show it off to you. All right, well, welcome back. Thanks for choosing to be here today. I do appreciate your time very much. Like I said, I want to talk to you about a perfect get-home bag, bug-out bag, or just an all-around camp cook stove. This is the Firebox Nano from fireboxstoves.com. Now, as you guys can see, it does come with a tiny footprint, but it packs a punch, a huge punch. I have cooked dinner for my family of six on this thing. So it may be small, but you can get a lot of work done with it. And by small, I do mean small. It comes in in a package that is just a little bit bigger than a deck of cards, I'd say. It is very much thinner than a deck of cards. It weighs all of six ounces. This is the stainless steel model. They do have a titanium model which weighs in at just a hair over four ounces, I believe. Let's go ahead and get the price point out of the way. The stainless steel model is just under $40. The titanium model is around $60. All the information where you can find this, more information about it, will be in the description of this video. So to answer the obvious question, why do I feel this is perfect for a survival kit, bug out bag, get home bag? Because in any kit like that, space and weight are at a premium. At least I know that's the way my kits run. So. Like I said, I mean, it comes in at just a hair larger than a deck of cards. It's obviously thinner than a deck of cards, but it's just a hair taller. Weight, six ounces, you can't beat that. If you choose to get the titanium, four ounces, I mean, it's almost like it's not there. Because it's nice and flat, it will fit in almost any pocket. You could even put this in your back pocket if you wanted to carry it like that. Now, I realize that doesn't make it stand head and shoulders above other stove options out there, but where this really shines when compared with the weight and the, and the footprint of it is the functionality of it. It is very versatile. There are many different ways you can set it up, many different ways you can fuel this stove, and in every configuration that I have tried it, it really packs a punch. You can you can use it for short burns, you can use it for long burns, you can, you can even put much larger pots on it than what the footprint looks like to cook for a lot of different people. But if you're not cooking for a lot of different people, it is versatile in that you can kind of tone down the heat level you can tone down the burn time and just tailor it to whatever you're cooking so if you're just cooking for yourself or boiling four ounces of water just for a cup of coffee you can tailor it to that so you don't have a lot a long burn time past the point that you need it so just a little bit of fuel will go a long way or if you need to really pack a punch you can set it up in like a Swedish fire stove configuration like what we're gonna do today and have an extremely long burn time that's fuel efficient controllable heat before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video no pun intended I wanted to take a quick second just to show off exactly what I mean by how this doesn't take up any space in, in a kit, how it will fit virtually anywhere. This is a French trade bag from the Hidden Woodsman, great piece of gear, you guys have seen this before. This is the larger out of pocket. Stand it up, it takes up less than half the horizontal space here. You still have plenty of area above it to pack more gear in there. But also on the inside, which some of you guys may be familiar with, there is what he has his map pocket or whatnot. I just keep a first aid kit in there. Still very un unobtrusive. It doesn't hinder keeping gear in your main compartment. It doesn't stick out. It's still flat. And still plenty of space to keep my first aid kit in there. These nanos come standard with this little ash pouch or whatnot, just to, something for you to put it back in to keep the rest of your gear clean. They do make a Kodoro nylon pouch. They also have a leather pouch that you can buy extra for these. Looks extremely simple, doesn't it? Well, let's get this angle to where you guys can see it. Setup is extremely easy. Just pop the corners out, fold it out. Got the little miniature fire sticks here. Take those off the side. And here is the floor plate. Lay that down. And as far as the basic configuration, you are done. On two sides here, you do have feed, feed ports or whatnot. One is lower than the other, so you can kind of stack wood on opposite sides. One of the main features I really like about this stove is that the, the feet of this stove turn in 360 degrees so you can easily set this up for uneven ground rocky ground something like that you can really tailor it to where you are without having to go to a lot of work to flatten an area out now as I did mention this is extremely versatile this is where these fire sticks come in handy on the corners here you have these little holes these are designed for your fire sticks one on one side one on the other and now you have multi-fuel options for if you want to use an alcohol stove, 
Trangia slides right down in there, locks it down into place. You don't have to worry about collecting wood. You don't have to worry about wood smoke. It's going to be quiet. So again, going back to you know your, your bug out bag or your get home bag, if you're wanting to run quiet, if you're not wanting to have a smell, alcohol stove is perfect for that. Along the same lines, and I'm going to throw up a couple pictures here, I don't have this set up. There is another piece of kit that goes that you can purchase to go with this. It is a gas stove that slides down in here, much like this Trangia. It's the exact same size, so if you're wanting to run a bottle fuel, you can do that as well. This is a wood cook stove primarily. You can set it up as a typical debris stove where you just layer your wood down in there build it up and light your fire off the top like that. One of my favorite ways to do it is to stand your wood up. And it works very similarly to what a Swedish fire, fire torch type setup works. That provides for a longer burn time than your typical than your typical debris setup, but not as long as a true Swedish fire torch setup. Now this works really well if you're gonna be adding wood through the, the feed ports. One thing I like about this configuration is you can easily control heat by pushing in or pulling out your fuel out of these. Your imagination is really the limit in how you can set up your your wood to burn with this. Now my favorite way, if I am doing a longer burn, a longer cook like we're going to be doing today, my favorite way to set it up with a Swedish fire torch on the inside. Now as with any Swedish fire torch, just baton that into four equal pieces. With your typical Swedish fire torch setup, you're going to have it have your quarters placed back to make it look a semblance of its original self. And you start a fire down in the center and it just kind of spreads from there. With this, you do it kind of the opposite. Go ahead and raise go ahead and raise the floor of the stove. What you're going to do is you're going to place these down in here where the inside corner mates with the corner of the stove. What you do from here is you put your tender and whatever you want to actually get your fire started with down in the center. Okay, I'm just shaving off a little bit of fat wood down in there. These do get started a lot easier in this stove with something with a little bit of an accelerant in it. So, you know, man-made fire starter, fat wood, birch bark, something like that. Today, to get this started, I'm just going to use an ugly stick for mission preparedness. It's a pretty cool new fire starter on the market. It's cool about them. Blow them out, they're reusable. It's like a reusable match. All right, as that gets established here, what are we cooking today? This is by viewer request. Gary Lawson from C2G Fab asked me when I reviewed this stove to make this stuff. He thought I'd really like it. So today we are going to make this. I've never had it before. I've had something somewhat similar. It looks good. So we'll see. I am going to kind of put my own flare on it. I'm going to add some salt pork, onion, serrano pepper and uh, go from there. Go ahead and slice up my serrano. Just dice up some onion. The Swedish fire torch configuration, they do start out kind of slow, but once they get going, they go. Go ahead and start heating this up, rendering off some of that fat. Add some water. All right, we are not quite at a boil yet, but Gary said this took longer than he thought, so we can go ahead and add about half of this so it can be heating up and soaking while we're coming up to full boil. Here's a close-up of that Swedish fire torch working on the inside there. As you can see, it's cold up and just shooting all the heat out the top. It's not a huge flame, but it's a lot of heat. As you can see, we're cooking right along. folks may be wondering, what does that barley and lentil and split pea meal look like? Well, I can honestly say, it looks pretty bland. It retains the heat a lot. It is pretty tasty. Definitely needs some salt, but that salt pork in there, it, it uh, seasoned it just enough with those serranos and those onions. It is pretty tasty. This would be a nice filling meal on the trail. It is nice and light 
It just, uh, it, it takes a commitment and time to fix it. I'm gonna have to remember this one, that's pretty good. Another thing I love about this stove, that Swedish torch has been out for all of maybe five minutes, six, something like that. Just kind of give it a little thump, a little bit of shake, the ashes fall right off, it's ready to go back in its stuff sack. As I've said previously, not only is this stove great for, you know, a bug out bag or a get home bag, some kind of survival kit, something like that. It's great for everyday life. I've used this at work to heat up a cup of coffee to actually make my dinner meal. I love the fact that it's versatile. You can set up many multiple configurations of how to fuel the stove. Even, even if you're using natural biofuels, you can set it up in many different configurations and kind of tailor it to whatever you're wanting to cook from from maybe a cup of coffee all the way up to dinner of for six people. And going back to the, the size of the footprint and the weight of the stove, you can fit it just about anywhere from your back pocket to just about any pocket in any kind of survival kit that you have. So I've gone over a lot of pros. Are there any cons? Actually, I don't think so, at least not for me. This, quite honestly, is probably one of the best $40 I have spent on any outdoorsy type gear. This stove fits me, fits my personality, fits my family, and fits the way I run my kits and my gear perfectly. I will go ahead and leave all the relevant links in the description of this video. Anyway, enough yakking, enough rambling. Thank you very much for being here today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, would you please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button? I would appreciate it very much. If you haven't done so yet, if you enjoy this type of content, whether cook stoves, bushcraft, camping, you know, gear reviews, stuff like that, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, hang around for a while. And as always, folks, hit up that comment section. Let's talk about this stove. Ask me questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Anyway, let's just talk about it. Thank you very much again for being here, and I will see you next time. You guys have a great day.